guys and welcome to my February wrap up. I have put this off forever and I don't know why because I only read five books in February which is quite shocking. I read like double the amount already in March because it's towards the end of March. I was just really really busy in February so yeah I finally got around to filming this. I don't know why I just didn't want to sit down and write all the reviews for it and Doing wrap-ups is harder because there's a lot of reviews. I want to tell you about the books and whether you should read them or not, but wrap-ups do take quite a bit more time looking up things. I should do it as I go along because I'm always like right after I read a book, I have all these thoughts on a book and sometimes I'll sit down and do it all, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. So Bromance Book Club number one was by Lisa K. Adams. Uh, this came out November 5th, I think. November 5th of 2019. So like four months ago. So if you haven't gotten around to reading it, don't be, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's a really cute, uh, chick -lit adult romance novel. It's kind of on a flip turn because most romance novels are through the female or like the female and the male. This one is set through the males, like mostly the male's narrative. Um, but it's about a girl, a guy named Gavin and Thea. And Gavin joins a bromance book club because his marriage is over. He's a baseball player, I believe. Um, and his wife leaves him with like his twin kids. Uh, she takes his twin kids and leaves him because he's just been distant and really not been into the relationship and there's kind of nothing left. Um, and even though she's asked to try and try, but he ends up joining this romance book club because some of his friends have been in trouble in their marriages before and they think reading romance novels and applying them to their marriages is exactly what he needs. So at first he's embarrassed and doesn't want to do it, but he goes along with it and it ends up working for him. The thing about the book which I love the most was the romance book club. I liked reading that part the most. I thought that was the funniest bits about it. I didn't find the book too terribly funny. I still gave the book a really high rating. I think it was like four. Um, but I really like the book. I kind of like the flip and turn from like the girl trying to figure things out to the guy trying things out. So I thought that was fun and new. I love the romance book club. I thought it was really cute. Gross is like girl romance book clubs. Um, I liked that the guy Gavin wasn't a super alpha male, even though he was a pro athlete, he wasn't like that stereotypical alpha male. The big problem in the relationship is like she lied about the big O's. <laughs> Um, as well and he like stormed out so they have a huge miscommunication problem the only thing about the book is like I didn't like that most of the book it was seen as like Gavin had promoted all these problems and not Zia as well which usually it's 50-50 I'm like yeah I don't know it just <laughs> that part I didn't really particularly love about the book but I will definitely read more. I thought it was really good. I thought it was funny. I thought it was like a different twist on things. I would recommend it um, if you're into adult romances <laughs> or like sports theme romances as well. Book number two is Love the One You're With. It is the Sex, Love, and Stiletto series number two. And I'll do number three right after this by Lauren Lane. I think this one came out in 2013. The next one came out in 2014, so quite a while ago. Um, but they're very popular, kind of like Remembrance of Sex and the City. So if you like Sex and the City, you will probably like these books. They're about these girls who work at Cosmopolitan Magazine. The first one I read is about Grace and Jake Malone. So oh, Grace has been hurt really bad in a relationship. Um, she's not my favorite <laughs> of all the stiletto girls, but it's an okay storyline. I actually prefer the storyline a little more than some of the others, but like the other personalities a little better, if that makes sense. Grace and Jake. Jake is like this really cool guy. He's like a travel editor, or he wants to take over the travel section. He wants to travel. He likes the thrill of things. He likes the change of things. He likes to do things constantly. He works for the Oxford series, which is like a men's magazine, which is right down below Cosmopolitan, not Cosmopolitan, the Stiletto magazine, supposedly. Um, and Grace has been kind of scorned by men lately because she breaks up in this long relationship. So she does not want to get deceived by a guy who she thought she had known very, very well and ends up cheating on her. She doesn't, so she has like this thing in her mind where she's like Grace 1.0 and Grace 2.0, which I think a lot of people would maybe not like, but I didn't mind it. I get it. She was trying to improve herself and trying to be more aware and it is kind of a battle through the whole book, but it's a really cute storyline. I like the storyline of this one. Jake is a really, you'll like it when you switch to his POV out of Grace's. 
But yeah, I like the storyline. The second one was Just One Night by Lauren Lane. And it is about a girl named Riley who I really, really like. And she is like the writer of like the more intimate things in the magazine. So, but she's like been faking it because um, she doesn't actually have experience. And she's always pined after this guy who is like running like a distillery. His name is Sam. Um, he's like not in the Oxford series. So that's like kind of nice that they're not just pairing up a bunch of magazine people. He's kind of a distant person. He's in like distillery stuff. He used to be in the corporate world in New York. I think that's where he made money to stop and like to make his whiskey. Um, but he's out of that now, but he's kind of filled with the same. He's kind of filled with a lot of self-hatred uh, because his mommy is so mean. And that's one point of the story I did not like. Like I hated, I like that he wasn't a super alpha male kind of guy, but I hated how much self-hatred Sam had. Um, I just didn't like reading about it. But Riley is one of my favorite characters and I thought it was fun and cute. And this, it's like set on like this juvenile <laughs> Thing a bit because he's been friends with Riley and Sam have been friends since they were little children and Sam is actually best friends with her brother so it was like a juvenile threat you know don't go near my sister and Sam takes it to heart that is kind of like you have to suspend your belief to believe that's true because he's been pining after for a decade that's ridiculous <laughs> yeah um, it's a cute story it's fun uh, then the next book was Tweet Cute. I think I put Tweet Cute in my YA Romance Recommend Reads. This is by Emma Lord. It came out January 21st of this year, 2020. It is a brand new YA Romance read if you're looking for one. I'll go ahead and try and put that card up here to the YA Romance Reads. But it's a really cute little book. Too cute is. It's got a cute little cover. I loved Me Cute last year. Completely different author because this was a debut novel, I believe. It's about two kids, um, teens, who are growing up in NYC. And the mom owns like a burger giant company. And the guy's dad's or parents own a small deli. He claims that this giant burger company took their grilled cheese recipe. You don't know why, there is some inner convoluted family mystery going on in the background. <laughs> uh, you kind of hate Emma's mom through most of the story because it's just weird. Her mom's relationship with her daughter, I believe is kind of weird. Uh, and yeah, but it's a really cute story. It's a Twitter war over who stole the sandwich or not. They both go to the same school. They get to know each other through it. It's really cute. YA romance. I like it though too because it kind of veers off course a lot. It's not just all about the Twitter. There's other things going on in the life. There's like family issues and getting into college and friends and just like kind of all the teen. Anyways, the very last book I read in February was The Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. Leigh Bardugo I love as an author. She wrote Six of Crows and she wrote this whole Grisha series and she wrote um, Crooked Kingdom as well, which was in the duology of Six and Crows, also about the Grisha series, and she wrote King of Scars, um, which is also in the Grisha series. But this is her first adult novel outside of that. It's still in place with fantasy, and it is about like a girl with like the Skull and Bone Society of Yale and like all these societies, and like Yale is supposedly on like this land of magic, okay? And all these societies have plotted themselves on top of these magic and perform these things to like help the stock markets not crash and things like that. Um, predict things and help the wealthier older generations that were in these societies once. Okay, so that's the premise of the story. I did not like this. I liked it because it was Leigh Bardugo so I gave it three stars because the writing was still impeccably well done but it timeline jumps the story timeline jumps to like the ending kind of middle ending and then you're like go back and forth so I didn't get like that connection for Alex Alex is the main narrator in the story I don't get why she's there in the end like because I didn't get that connection of why she needed to be there and solve this mystery so there's a lot of mysteries going on there are it gets cringe worthy like really fast like not like embarrassing cringe but it uh it it gets super in depth into like witchery stuff and like there's rapes and killings and it's a lot it's, it's a gruesome book which I was not as prepared for and I didn't love that aspect reading about it I didn't love like the timeline jump aspect it just did not work for me as a story I didn't I wasn't sold that Alex I don't know I didn't I wasn't sold that Alex needed to be around to solve this mystery and stuff and how connected she was because 
it jumps from the very beginning when she's just getting involved with society and this society like checks those houses and makes sure they don't go over the line um but it just it just was not for me in the end love her as a writer it was still a solid read it wasn't a confusing read i still got it all but it was just it was not my kind of book. I cannot believe it went a Goodreads choice award last year. Because, yeah, it's only came out like four or five months ago. <sighs> yeah, not for me, though, this time. Okay, that is my February wrap-up. I will see you probably pretty soon in my March wrap-up. Don't forget to look out for my February Don't forget to look out for my February book haul. It's got some really new, exciting books in it. And uh, my new books from April, which is real exciting. Hope you guys are healthy and safe and having fun quarantining. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys next time. Bye.